I would strongly recommend that, especially if you're going into practice with other people, especially if you're going to be I mean, like a group practice might already have a system and you'll just be going to work on their system. Making sure that the notes that you write are private to you and no one else within that clinic can read them, remember, because we've got confidentiality there. So you'd have your own passwords and nobody else would have access to those. But so it might be there's a system there already that you're using. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello everyone and welcome to Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. And I thought here we are at the end of semester and lots of you are going to be going out into the world and looking at starting your own businesses. And lots of you are already in the world and thinking to yourself, I see the mates that I trained with who were, took longer to train than I did and they're about to qualify. Maybe I should get on with it and get back into it. And so I thought I'd have a sort of a mini series on this setting up and how when we set up, we need to be ready to go for the future. Not ready to go for right now because we do those things as we start, but ready to go for the future. So when I set up, there weren't all of the systems. I couldn't use Simple Clinic or Practice Better or Halaxy. I couldn't use any of those systems because they didn't exist. Halaxy came on very quickly, but and I joined up. It had a different name then, but I didn't use it. I kept on using paper. And then eventually I sort of started using it, but still not really. It wasn't until 2019 that I employed someone else to upload all my files because I didn't have time. Whereas if it had existed when I started, when I was using brown manila folders and paper, if it had existed when I started and if I'd gone straight onto it, or maybe it didn't, I wasn't tech savvy enough, who knows? But if I'd gone straight onto that, I wouldn't then have had to employ someone else to put everything into the sky for me because or into the clouds. I mean, I couldn't do it myself because I didn't have the time. So we really need to think, how am I going to set up all these things? And that's one thing about a slow start is being able to set up how you need things and what you need. All right. So when we think about those settings, we have to think about our growth. Generally, we start out small. We start out with one or two clients here and there. Then they start telling their friends and then we get more and more clients. And during that time, we working part time in another job. So I was nursing and I was taking people naturopathically. I was nursing and I was seeing people for nutrition or herbs or whatever it was. So I had two jobs on the go and I had that part-time job supporting my small business as it began to grow. I was very limited in the number of hours that I could dedicate to my business because I had a baby and toddler and a kindy child. So when I finally decided to start. So when we think about I'm going to go into practice, we want to think about what systems are going to work for me in the long run. You don't want to be changing things over. And when we're in it, if we start to ramp up and get busy, that then might be the time to go, "Uh uh-oh, I know I should have done this six months ago. I couldn't afford it then. I will do it right now. I won't leave it for another six months when I have double the number of clients. So setting up our systems is all part of setting up all that background stuff. So for me, I started out on paper and then I moved to Halaxy because all I wanted was to store notes. I don't want anything else. All right. I didn't need all the other things because I had been piecemealing along the way. Now, that means that it's slightly more difficult, but at the same time, it's something I'm used to. I don't have to change it. It makes it easier for me when I'm running two businesses because I run the mentoring side and I see clients. So because I'm running the two separate businesses, using Acuity Scheduling works for me. Whereas if I was seeing very few mentees and I was mostly seeing clients, then one of the practice systems would be perfect because I could still use the same calendar. I could segregate those people out and I could keep their notes elsewhere. But of course, I create so much content 
content. I've got tons of content and I've got lots of ways to work with me. So let's take it that next step. So when I started out, I was like, what am I going to do with my content? I'm creating, I started creating content for my graduate mastery program because there were, there's a huge group of people, especially now after lockdowns and COVID and people doing clinics online and in lockdown, it's been very difficult for them. So the graduate program is needed more than ever. And we do spend the first month working on making sure these systems are up and running, making sure that our practice is where we want it starting out at and what we need it to be. And then we go into the subject matter that isn't necessarily covered as well in colleges. It could be like pediatrics, but also it's clinical support. So you're getting those questions answered. So some people in the graduate program still aren't seeing clients. One person's moving house at the moment. So there's all these other things that go on. So they're still learning. They're still wanting to take in all this clinical learning, but they also need all this additional support with building their business from baseline. So when we think about it, we have to think, where are we going? And that's hard, isn't it? Because we leave college, we haven't niched. We don't know. We kind of know who we like to see. We know our preferred problems, but we haven't niched it down yet. And that's part of the academy, finding out these niches, working it out, working out what you want to do, who you want to see, where you want to be. So when we set up these systems, I initially started by recording my courses and putting them on YouTube. And then I would email everything out. And that was fine for the summer school that I did, the very first summer school I did, that was fine putting it on YouTube. But at the same time, as I started doing it, I knew that this was going to get bigger. I knew the graduate program was going to get bigger. So I looked around for a platform. Now, at the time I chose Teachable and it was really good. It's actually, it is looking good again now, but it fell behind in my opinion. It kind of fell behind the all the other ones. And so I wanted to leave. Then there was a couple of choices. Everyone, of course, Kajabi is kind of gold standard, but Kajabi only holds three. You can only have three courses. You have to pay for each course more than that. And so I knew, well, I make lots of webinars. I create lots of education. I've now got the academy, you know, my membership. So I use one of the other systems for a while and that was a nightmare. It was old and clunky. I had Teachable. I had another system. I thought this just isn't working. So I moved it all to Podia so that I had it all in one place. Now what we have to think about is how am I going to work in programs with my clients? Because the majority of you aren't going to be in my situation of having years in teaching hospitals all over the world, working in huge institutions, being an advanced specialist nurse, doing all the things that I've done. Unfortunately, it takes until you're a bit older to have all this stuff behind you. That's just the way age works. When we think about setting up now, we're thinking to ourselves, I'm going to see clients and I would like to be able to put them on programs or do packages with them. Now, where is the best place for me to hold and store this content? Now, I would recommend that you actually try and attach it with one of the systems to your website rather than having Kajabi or Podia or Teachable or any of these because Google wants you to play with your website. It wants you on your website all the time. If you're on your website, updating your website, knowing your website really well, connecting with Google and everybody else, making sure that it's all up to date all the time, then you're going to get better SEO then if you just have your website sitting there and like me, my website sits there, I have a website mentoring with Geraldine that just isn't touched. I never go near it because I'm always on my Podia site, the www.geraldineheadley.com. So everything, you know, so I'm putting all my effort into that. The website's being left to Mulder. My Highgate Proactive Health website is left to Mulder. And then I have to get somebody in to update it and do it all because I haven't got the time. Whereas if I used my website from the start with my one program or maybe two programs on it or my membership on it, then it would have been much easier to make sure it was always up to date, that I was always in there doing the one thing, whereas my one thing is being on my Podia site. So what I'm getting at is looking at how am I going to store my client notes? What system do I want to use? Will I have a program with it? So if you're using Simple Clinic or Practice Better, you can put your program in there for your clients. So it means that it's all stored in one place. And that's what we really want. We want things to be stored in one place. But the other thing is, how many people are you, not necessarily a simple clinic of practice better, but with all of these systems, generally what happens is you get to a certain number of people, a certain audience size or buyer size for your courses, and then you have to pay more. You've hit the 1,000 or the 100 people who've purchased. And then, yay, you've got to pay more. Lucky them, unlucky you. 
you. So Active Campaign is an email system that's, again, gold standard, top of the line, all the best. I find it really boring, really irritating, and I can't stand it most of the time. But it's really, really good, and it does all of the things. It has all of the bells and whistles. So I'm meant to be using it, but I don't find it pretty enough to actually do my emails, which is kind of what you've got to do. So I use Flowdesk because it's pretty, not because it's particularly practical and it doesn't have the bells and whistles like Active Campaign does, but it's so pretty. I don't mind going to do my emails because emails for me are something I don't really like doing. There is that other side to the coin. How easy is it for you to use the system you've chosen? And what is the longevity of it? With Flowdesk, I can have as many people as I want. With Active Campaign, each time you reach a number you go up in the price now remembering that we do have to keep our email addresses up to date we have to clean it out and get rid of people who aren't responding to our emails that's just yet another job to do and our email sender tells us if it's achieving what it's meant to if it's got a good open rate if your emails are going to dead boxes or if people just aren't opening them and that's all part of having a very active list but how are you going to put a program together and where are you going to store it if you're going to have one that's a long way off for many of you but where we are now is what is going to be with us down the line So I would strongly recommend that, especially if you're going into practice with other people, especially if you're going to be, I mean, like a group practice might already have a system and you'll just be going to work on their system, making sure that the notes that you write are private to you and no one else within that clinic can read them, remember, because we've got confidentiality there. So you'd have your own passwords and nobody else would have access to those. But so it might be there's a system there already that you're using. If you're going to be working for yourself and you're determined and it's going to work and you've had people come to see you in clinic at college and you know that you can do this and this is you, then have a look at the system straight away. Because with like Simple Clinic, it's like $30 a month or something. It's really not very much. I can't actually remember. I'm going to get Marianne on so that you can have a total update, a true update on what it's like in there. But it means you have that system from the beginning because what's really hard to do is change system all right and often we have to pay so especially with someone like me who's got tons of clients I had to pay someone to put them onto Halaxy because it was a system I already had so I might as well use it because I knew how to use it so I might as well use what I have just to store notes we all want to work in slightly different ways but tech can end up costing you a complete bomb And these are things we think we need, systems we think we need. And I am an absolute course junkie. I mean, I will buy a course and I will buy a course on making a course, even though I don't need to buy a course on making a course because I've made heaps of courses and I will read the content that I've just purchased and go, why did I do that? Mine is way better than that. My stuff in the academy far outstrips what I've just bought. Why did I do that? We end up buying things because we think, oh, there's something else, something around the next corner that's going to be better. Whereas meanwhile, our own content and what we can do can often be found at a very low price and we can sit down and work out what is it we need to be paying. We need a mentor, totally need a mentor. You're going to probably have that system for the life of your business. So is it going to hold up to scrutiny? Do you want to start small though with it like I did with my summer school and that I put it on YouTube before transferring it because it was one course, one thing really easy to move six weeks worth of content onto a platform. But if it had been more than six weeks worth of content, if it had been now where I've got five years worth of content, I've got like 20 or 30 courses there. They're not all for sale, but they're all in there. Things have happened. Things have changed. I've offered different things at different times, depending what I think people need. I've been delivering my Finding Your Flow webinar for six years now. And so conducting confident consultations is sort of the next level on that because that really does break it down and nut it out. So because that's really important, isn't it? So how we use these systems and the longevity of the systems is really important. So it's a really good idea 
to I mean it's in the graduate program we go through all of this I go through all of it with every mentee to make sure that they've got the systems that they want right from the beginning and this is the boring systems too so it's your legals and your practicals it's making sure you know in college you had to have your working with children check and you had to have lots of other base practicals it's about making sure that you have those and you have a system for going yeah I need to update that now yeah I need to update that with my I'll do that at the same time as I do my association membership and my CPR update, for example. We've got lists of things that we have to update and do. We've got systems in place. Everything from the auto-reply, the email auto-reply, the out-of-office email auto-reply. We've got everything in place. All of these simple things that when we suddenly start getting busy, they begin to overwhelm us because we hadn't got our systems in place right at the beginning when we had the time to do so. I mean, some things are really easy now. You don't have to, my first recipes that I gave to clients, I sat there and laboriously typed them all out, printed them. I'd hand people these printed then. Microsoft Word got better, so I was able to make them look prettier and so on and so forth. Whereas now, of course, you can just get a recipe off the internet. Here you go. Here's your recipe with two changes, 10% difference. Off we go. Much easier. But you need these things sitting there. You do need, and you've got them in college, poo charts sitting there, but you'll need one that's online. You've got diaries there. You've got diets there. You've got all of those things there ready to go, but they currently will say the college that you're at. So you need to convert those all to your own wording. Your intake forms need to be done. And all of these things take time, but we do need to start at the beginning and make sure that we get them done. All of this stuff's in the academy as well. So um, all of my intake forms and all of my everything, all my paperwork is in there. I just wanted you to be aware of the beginning is the future. The beginning is where we end up. So it's a really good idea to start as we mean to go on. And I don't mean immediately going out and renting a room and having no clients and expecting people to just walk through the door. That's not going to happen. But it might be that you go out, there's a huge spa near you or a salon or something or something that you know they've got a back room and you can go and say, well, can I rent that back room per client while I get started can we have each client an amount goes to you you can book them in and you take a deposit and that's the money that goes to you and then I take the rest of the money when I see them for example because we need to have a client base before we open rooms but we don't need to have a client base to get our systems in place so that's where I'm starting with this one There's going to be about three of them because I really want to make sure that you understand the connections. And so we're going to have a few connecting podcasts. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today. I really enjoy recording these. If you've got any friends that you think would benefit from the show, then if you're on the podcast, you just go to the link there and you can copy the link for this particular show and send it to them. And that way I'll reach as many people as possible. And if you've not already followed or subscribed to this podcast, just hit the plus button in Apple Podcasts or the follow button in Spotify. And that just means that you get episodes delivered directly to your app so you don't have to go searching for them. So thank you so much for today and I look forward to chatting with you on the next podcast. See you soon. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning, then the Academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.